So now we're in the year two of this consolidation. Peerless acquired Special a year ago, and they went through a full year of operations, and now they've gone through their second year of operations. And Special is reporting net income of 75. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna debit um, investment in Special Foods for 75 times 80% or 60. And the credit would be to income from Special Foods. Then we have the dividend. So I'll debit cash for 40,000 times 80% and credit investment in special foods, $32,000. This is all in thousands, if you care. So the beginning balance, here's our roll forward. I like roll forwards. And these are the balances from last year that I'm carrying forward. So Peerless had recorded, of the income of the sub, Peerless had recorded 60, and 20% of that, 75 times 20%, would be 15 belongs to the non-controlling interest. And the whole thing goes to retained earnings. I'm explaining it a little differently. I don't know, I'm going by row instead of column. It might be clearer this way, who knows. Anyway, the dividend that Peerless is recording, Peerless received the dividend of 32, and the non-controlling interest share of the dividend would be 40 times 20% or eight. And the total dividend was 40, that would reduce retained earnings. So ending non-controlling interest on the balance sheet would be 71. Peerless's investment in special would be 284. Total stockholders equity of special is the same and retained earnings of special is 155. And again, this should be equal to this. Now let's go to the consolidation. We got to do our big elimination entry here. So 80% of net income of special um, is going to be debited against Peerless. And 20% of that, the non-controlling interest share, is going to go to the non-controlling interest share of net income. And that's all I need to do so far on my income statement. On my statement of retained earnings, I'm going to debit beginning retained earnings of the sub, and I'm going to credit dividends, the sub dividends that were paid to the parent. The one other thing I got to do before I allocate all of this to the non-controlling interest and the parent is going to be a debit to common stock. So let's look at this whole journal entry in one screen. I'll shrink it a little bit. I hope you're able to see it. I'm sorry if it's kind of small, but I find that it just helps to be able to see all the pieces of the journal entry in one screen. And I make them yellow. So we have these four debits in one credit and 80% of this is gonna be credit to the investment account and you gotta, you know, pray that it's got 284 and 20% is going to be credit to the non-controlling interest in net assets of special foods and you're going to want that to be 71 to make sure you got it right I always you know I've had questions like this on exams we'll talk about exams don't panic about them but I always feel for students who are like on an exam and they're just dying because this doesn't work they don't have quite the right numbers. Something went wrong someplace. And you could see them on the exam and they're erasing and they're going crazy and they don't know what to do. There you go, investment account. And non-controlling interest, 0.2 times 60 plus 15 plus 120 plus 200 minus 40 equals 71. Whew, close. And you can see I put this in the wrong column. So I'll just move it into the right one. There you go. And make these yellow for clarity. You don't have to use the colors. I find they help. The debits are accumulated depreciation is always 300 because that is 
the amount of accumulated depreciation on the date of acquisition. It's still on the sub's books. The sub was using something called push down accounting, then they would take it off the books. But they did. <laughs> and um, these are your elimination entries. And again, your book presents these as debits, credit, debit, credit as a regular journal entry format. I never do that because I don't want these to be confused with journal entries that actually go on the general ledger. So now, in the income statement, this is gonna be plus, plus. The actual mechanics of the spreadsheet are a big pain in the neck. I'm doing them here in Excel, of course, but um, if you're using Connect, then you've got a whole nother set of problems, and that's the mechanics of Connect. You gotta do these by, I guess, with a calculator or something, um, but Connect is kind of a pain in the neck about these things. Get it? Pain in the neck? Um, never mind. So you can see here my controlling interest in net income is the same as Peerless is reporting, 220. It's a good sign, right? Beginning balance here for retained earnings. And I'm going to have to add across the dividend. Net income is going to flow down from which number is it? It's the controlling interest. So this here, I'll put this in some color, light blue, is going to flow down right to there. And then we add everything across. And again, make sure ending retained earnings for peerless is the same as ending consolidated retained earnings. Because that's peerless, right? Consolidated is peerless for all, for all purposes. Um, balance sheet plus, plus, plus debits, minus credits. Scroll all the way, copy that across. And we got to do this side. This is going to be plus, plus, minus the debits, plus the credits, because it's the right side of the balance sheet. You got to be very careful. Retained earnings comes from the statement of retained earnings. So all these numbers are going to flow down from here. They should all be the same. And then assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. And that's what, it, and this, these are numbers that would go into your financial statements. 